This presentation describes thermal ablation of varicose veins, either in the distribution of the long saphenous vein or the short saphenous vein. Thermal ablation of varicose veins can be achieved by the use of radio frequency electrical energy or laser light energy, which heats up the wall of the vein and causes the wall of the vein to be damaged and as the healing process occurs, the vein becomes obliterated. Radio frequency ablation can be performed in the office or in the interventional radiological suite. In my practice, I perform radio frequency ablation in the interventional suite. As you can see, the patient is on the x-ray table. There is a tourniquet placed around the upper thigh to distend the long saphenous vein, and an ultrasound is used to image the long saphenous vein so this can be accessed via a needle puncher below the knee under local anaesthetic. In this picture we see the patient on the x-ray suite with the C-arm in the background. There is a micro puncher needle in the below knee segment of the long saphenous vein with an 018 guide wire in the vein. This puncher has been achieved using ultrasound guidance and will allow us to place further sheaths in the distal long saphenous vein so that we can access the long saphenous vein with the radio frequency probe. Once the long saphenous vein has been accessed with a micro puncture set, we place a stiff 035 Amplatz wire along the long saphenous vein up to the saphenofemoral junction and over this wire we place a 7 French sheath which allows access for the radio frequency probe. All of this is achieved under local anaesthetic. Once we have the stiff wire and seven French gauge sheath in place, tumescent anaesthesia is administered via a tumescent syringe and a 21 gauge needle. The tissue surrounding the wire, a long saphenous vein and sheath, is infiltrated with 0.2% narapin. I usually use about 200 mils to infiltrate the whole length of the long saphenous vein, including the saphenofemoral junction, to the below knee segment where the access puncher has been placed. As you can see, successive needle punches are required, but using a tumescent syringe, we can usually reduce the number of needle punches that are required. In this particular case, it was possible to feel the stiff wire beneath the skin and infiltrate percutaneously without the use of an ultrasound. However, in many cases, an ultrasound would be used to follow the placement of the tumescent anesthesia around the long saphenous vein. As can be seen in this slide, it's possible to feel the stiff guide wire beneath the skin and administer the anesthesia. Anesthesia is administered all the way up to the saphenofemoral junction the position of the saphenofemoral junction is confirmed by the ultrasound and also confirmed by injection of a small amount of contrast agent to demonstrate the saphenofemoral junction and additionally any communicating veins that may be running off the long saphenous vein below the saphenofemoral junction. In this picture, we have an image of the radio frequency generator, which usually heats the wall of the vein up to about 120 degrees centigrade to achieve the burn on the inside of the vein. In this picture, we see the radio frequency probe. The handle is to the right, and the heating element is to the left. The heating element is 7 centimetres long, and sequential burns are required from the saphenofemoral junction to the site of access. It is possible to locate radiologically and ultrasonographically communicating veins that come off the long saphenous vein and administer a small amount of sclerosin agent into these veins as well as to perform radio frequency ablation of the main trunk of the long saphenous vein itself. Once this has been achieved, we can identify where the saphenofemoral junction is using a small injection of contrast agent through the radio frequency probe to ensure that it is not beyond the saphenofemoral junction. Once the radio frequency treatment of the long saphenous vein has been achieved, the sheath and the probe is removed and the size of the puncture site can be seen in this picture. The patient usually has a small band-aid placed over this puncture site 
and then the leg is wrapped with a triple layer bandage and stocking to compress the veins that have been treated by radiofrequency ablation. Once the bandages have been applied, the patient can get off the x-ray table and usually goes straight home immediately. The bandages are usually worn for about a week and the patient is encouraged to be mobile during this period of time. There is rarely any pain following radiofrequency ablation of the long saphenous vein. Occasionally, there is a small amount of bruising as a result of the multiple injections to provide tumescent anaesthesia. Not a great deal of time is required off work and recovery is very short as a result of this procedure. This type of treatment for the long saphenous vein is an alternative to stripping of the long saphenous vein and seems to be superior from the point of view of tissue damage and recovery time.